Gran Turismo Sport is a very well-crafted online racing destination. It's serious, sensible, structured, and unlike Sony's previous racing game, Drive Club, it's been reliable since launch. It's also supremely good-looking and handles very well. However, the hard pivot to an online-focused racing sim has seen it lose a slab of its single-player mode, and its garage and track selection is shockingly stingy next to the competition. While the spotlight has shifted to online racing, I still started my GT Sport journey in the solo campaign mode. Here, that's a series of license trials, racing scenarios, endurance tests, and hot lap challenges. It wasn't long until I got the bug for compulsively restarting and retrying them, aiming for gold or bust, and besting my friends' times. It doesn't quite replace the classic GT mode for me, but I've genuinely enjoyed it. The eclectic nature of campaign mode quickly educated me in the nuances of GT Sport's handling model, and overall, it's good stuff on both a wheel and a pad. It lacks the satisfying wrestle of stuff like Project Cars 2 and Assetto Corsa, but it's a shade more severe than Forza. Weight transfer is especially pronounced in road cars. They sound vastly better than previous GT games too. It's not class leading, but it's so much more nuanced. The PvP Sport Mode is what developer Polyphony is pushing here though, and the studio has created a sturdy online racing environment. There are three daily events rotated through every 20 minutes or less, as well as scheduled championships, though those are yet to begin. When the event is on a suitable track, I've had some decent fair races so far, only occasionally marred by lapped players trying to cannon into me like a pissed off Sebastian Vettel. The sportsmanship rating, which is listed beside your PSN ID for all races to see, should eventually begin to see me placed out of reach of these dangerous players. More or less a direct lift of iRacing's safety rating, GT Sport's sportsmanship rating rewards clean sectors, fair overtakes, and respectful racing. The system is less than perfect, both drivers in a collision are penalized regardless of who is at fault, but my rating is still improving after every race overall. Well, except for any events on the tiny, chaotic Northern Isle Speedway, which is a disaster online and should be nuked from orbit. Well, I say that, but I keep going back because it's where I got my first pole and my first win, baby! But I'm an idiot. Be better than me. If you don't want to or can't race online, arcade mode is all that's left. This is where the impressive PlayStation VR functionality sits too, which is limited to one-on-one -on -one battles against the AI, but with a wheel, it's a terrific entry-level advertisement for just how immersive VR can be. Arcade mode is the only part of GT Sport that works offline. You can't do driving tests, buy cars, take photos, or even save progress unless you're connected to the PSN. But my advice is to try sports mode if you can. I'm absolutely not an eSports guy, but I've warmed to it. I'm just not sure how long I'll be motivated to stick around with a narrow buffet of circuits and limited car classes. The lack of content is a real drag. GT Sport has a quarter of the tracks of its two big rivals this year, and there are only six real-world circuits. The lack of wet or shifting weather doesn't help either. The car list is disappointing too. The 160-car figure becomes much less impressive under scrutiny. Most manufacturers have a single tweaked model included multiple times, and there are about 30 Vision GT Fantasy models, which to me often feel like the automotive equivalent of those fashion shows where all the models are wearing bath mats, bin bags, and bits of fruit and straw. Too much. I mean, where's the retro stuff? With one exception, the oldest car in GT Sport is from 2009. That exception is a lone 1987 Quattro, which sticks out like a polar bear at a penguin bar mitzvah as the single retro ride in the whole game. The retort here is usually something about quality over quantity, but even though the level of detail in GT Sports vehicles is astonishing, it's not as if the cars the competition is producing are sketched in crayon. Polyphony has added a good livery editor to create authentic looking race cars, but the traditional part replacement system has been ditched for a more superficial upgrade bar. I suspect it's going to be hard for some people to reconcile this sort of stuff with GT Sport's more idiosyncratic indulgences. Like, we couldn't get a single returning original GT track, but we did get a showroom for a watch manufacturer and a kooky slideshow that allows us to sync up key moments in car culture with seismic world events like the election of Stalin and uh, the release of Bjork's first album. Thanks? 
many ways, GT Sport is the most polished Gran Turismo game in over a decade. It looks great, it feels great, and what's here has been carefully and well executed. However, while I can forgive the sprinkling of eccentric nonsense, the lack of car and track content really hurts, and the online-only nature of the vast majority of it is worrying. Overall, it just doesn't feel as complete as its key competitors. For more racing, check out our reviews of Forza Motorsport 7, Project Cars 2, and Dirt 4.